Here I've got three schematics on the board. What they're for is transformer secondaries. Three different secondaries. Primaries are off the top of the board somewhere, but I've induced by turns ratios and all of that, I've induced these voltages into the secondaries. But we're gonna look at these different configurations and kind of see if we can learn something about how these voltages are derived. First one over here is very much like what we have in a residential or a small commercial facility. Okay, you'll see your options are 120 volts or 240 volts. Okay, why do we have this two voltage option? Well, if we go back to the 40s or whenever it was when they were standardizing voltage systems across the country, they, they wanted to go 240, some folks did because it's more efficient, but enough people already had appliances that ran on 110 or 120 volts. So they wanted to make sure we had 120 volts. So they gave up some of the efficiency because there were already so many appliances in use. So, but what the, what the transformer, uh, the utility essentially gives you is a 240 volt transformer. The entire winding gives you 240 volts from black wire to red wire. Now we know because of our turns ratios, right? The more turns, the more voltage. So if I use half the turns on this winding, I should get half the voltage. Use the other half of the turns, get the other half of the voltage. Great, that's how I get 120. Start off with 240, get 120. We run our receptacles, our lights off of 120, hot water heater, many a baseboard heater, certain kinds of loads on 240 volts. And for 240, I don't need a neutral, do I? I just need a black and a red because it just goes through the transformer. I use the neutral if I'm using a 120 volt load, turn the light on, it flows this way. Plug something in a receptacle, it flows this way. Now, at this moment in time, we know that AC voltages go back and forward, back and forward, back and forward. So we catch it at one moment in time and we see what it's doing at that moment. So this moment, pushing this direction, okay? And then we have this little shared neutral, which kind of the amperages balance out. That's for another day. But we also have some loads that work on 120 and 240. A range or a dryer often takes both hots and a neutral, okay? And there, some parts of it work on 240, some parts of it work on 120. But what we have here, I drew the uh, sine waves for this. Sine wave for the black wire and for the red wire. But these wires are relative to the neutral, those voltages. So I have 120 volts. I have RMS voltage, root mean square. Not using the peak voltages. Everything I'll talk about is RMS, root mean square. So 120 volts, the black wire relative to the neutral. And the red wire relative to the neutral, 120. 120. 120, black to neutral, red to neutral, okay? Why, why did I point them different directions? Why aren't they both going the same way? Well, I said relative to the neutral. So compared to the neutral and the neutral point of the transformer, I'm looking to the red wire, I'm looking up the arrow, you know, against the arrow. The voltage is pushing towards me, I'm looking up voltage. And to the black wire, I'm looking down voltage. So one of them appears positive and one of them appears negative at any moment in time. So at this moment here, during this time, the black is appearing positive, the red is appearing negative. And that's why I have the 120, 120. But it's when I compare the black to the red that I'm not using a neutral on this load on the hot water heater, it's just straight 240 volts. Path in, return path changes direction. So I'm taking the black wire and comparing it to the red wire. So I get rid of the neutral. And the distance here is basically the difference of potential. Voltage is difference of potential between two points. From the black wire to the red wire, peak and trough directly opposite each other, 120, and add this other 120. Okay? Or subtract the negative, it's just like adding it. 
So I end up with 240 because I'm comparing the black curve to the red curve. And I could create another sine wave, it would just be double the magnitude. Okay. But over here, I get 120-208. There, I just plus them. But here, I can't do that. I can't do that. And the quick reason is because the one doesn't trough, uh, peak and trough directly opposite. Black wire starts up here, and 120 degrees later, the red wire starts. 120 degrees later, the blue wire. They're all 120 degrees out of phase. And therefore, the lines in the Y or the star and the resultant vectors are pointing out 120 degrees apart from each other. 120, 120, 120, 360, add it together, a full circle, okay? So although I have black to neutral is 120, red to neutral is 120, blue to neutral is 120, and we see that here, black to neutral, just across that winding, red to neutral, just across the one winding, and the same for blue to neutral. But when I go black, to red, let's say, black to red, I go through two windings. But it's different than here because they're 120 degrees out of phase from each other. So let's look at this. If they troughed and peaked directly opposite, I could just add them. But this one peaks here and this one troughs here. So the highest difference of potential between the red and the black. I'm not looking at the neutral or the blue at this point. I'm just comparing black to red. The largest difference of potential is after this one peaks and before this one troughs. And then they would be equal here and here. Uh, where is it? Right here. Yeah, black to red, here and here. So I would create another sine wave that wouldn't be quite double any one of these. But here's the formula that it would be. Winding voltage, or some people call it phase voltage, the voltage on each winding, times 1.73, which is the square root of three. Winding voltage, 120 in this case, times 1.73 equals my line voltage, 208. Or some people say line to line, L to L, sub L to sub L, line to line. Because I need to measure voltage between two points. You can't just measure the voltage of one point. I need a reference to measure it against. So from here to here is 208. Likewise, and also this. Okay. But that's the main reason we got 208 is that they're 120 degrees apart from each other and I'm really creating a new sine wave based on the difference from any two of these different waves. And it'll all work out to that same new magnitude of 208. And this system is great because I can run receptacles or other 120 volt loads from any of the phases to the neutral. Any phase to neutral is 120. Now, if I want to run 208 volts, I can run a single phase 208, which means I just use two wires, a black and a red, or a red and a blue, or a blue and a black. Or I can run three phase load at 208 volts. Here's my quick way of saying the difference. For single phase, I just have two wires, and they go out because I have one difference of potential, one voltage between those two wires. But if I have three wires, I have a difference of potential here, a difference of potential here, and another one between these wires. So three wires, three differences of potential, take away one wire, and I'm left with one difference of potential, okay? Black to red, red to blue, blue to black. And so we run those three phase loads Largely, there's several reasons why we might, but the efficiency is one of the main reasons that I can carry more power for the amount of copper I'm using, the amount of wire. I get more power, a better return for my investment, really.
that's what we do. We also get smoother running power for motors and things like that, more evenly balanced, okay, than a, than a single phase. So for larger loads, we tend to go three phase, but that's three differences of potential. So I don't need the neutral because they're all out of phase. They're all doing their all backwards thing. You know, some going forward, some backwards. They're sorting it out. And what's interesting, on a balanced load, means I have the same voltage, same current down each branch. If you take any vertical point here and add it up, you should get zero. These come about half the height is where this one drops. Any vertical point should add up to zero between those. But that's 120, 208, three phase Y or star system. One other note I'll make here, the neutral, that point XO is generally taken to ground in a transformer that's classified as a separately derived system. And because that same point is taken to ground, this conductor here is essentially taken to ground. And thereby we call the neutral most of the time in the code, the grounded conductor. Not always, but most of the time. The neutral is also called the grounded conductor. Okay. So then we have this other system that gives me three phase or single phase, 240, right? I can take any two conductors, black and red, red and blue, black and blue, 240 volts for single phase 208, or I can take all three for three phase, uh, excuse me, 240. But let's say I have a small manufacturing facility and most of my loads are 240, but I need some 120. Well, can't I take a 240 volt winding tap into the center of it. And if I'm using half the turns, half the voltage, wouldn't I get 120 here and 120 here? Sure enough, I do. But there comes this other problem with this system, is that from the third phase, often B phase, to the neutral, I get this higher voltage, high leg. Some people call it a wild leg. How do I get that 208? So I've got a full winding and half a winding, and it turns out that we draw them this way for a reason. Do the math, it would work out. If you drew 120 on this side of the triangle, 240 here, drop it straight down for a right triangle, 30, 60, 90, 120, 240, C squared minus A squared equals B squared, you would get 208 volts. So there's a couple requirements in the code. One is that this be uh, colored either orange or some other identifiable means. And then later in the code book with panels, generally it should be on B phase and you need a big sign on there saying, hey, watch out, B phase to neutral is 208 volts, okay? So you've got to have a sign saying what the voltage is on the high leg. So we don't accidentally take something from B phase to neutral, and plug it all in, and then we blow up a bunch of stuff because they're 120 volt loads and we threw 208. Talk to the older folks in the trade. There he's got stories about how people didn't check the voltage before they turned it on and ended up blowing up a bunch of stuff because they were rushing. They had to end up staying late, fix the whole operation. Okay? so. The other thing with this system, you've got to be more concerned about balancing it. What loads go where so that you have a balanced system. We want our transformers to be as balanced as possible. So here we have it. Three different configurations of how we deal with this 120, 240, 120, 208, 120, 240 here as well. These are mostly an older system. Utility in my area is not installing these as new systems. They will put one of these. And if you have equipment, that operates on 240, but you got a new service that doesn't have 240, come back for another class later, and we'll talk about how you can boost your 208 to 240. But that would require a separate type of transformer for that.